Hello friends, so I am back for the fourth and last layout for How to Kill a Kit with Style using the series that Janet has at four, I'm sorry, at RTS Scrapbooking for the four for four series. And I'm using mostly Heidi Swap's Wolf Pack for this. So the background paper I'm gonna use is this really great birch. And then let's see, the rest of the instruction she has, so that's a 12 by 12 card stock or background paper. Then we're supposed to use for a number two pattern, a three by nine paper. And I have this really cool wolf paper. Then we have a four by four pattern, which is just this little polka dot I have. No idea what I'm doing there. And then finally, an eight by eight paper that is in this distress stripe. And the photos I'm using, which is just one on this layout, is this photo here of my son and his buddies, and his buddy right here got married last week. So that's what we have for the photos. I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward the next part because I don't really know how I wanna put this together. So I'm gonna fast forward it and voice over and see where we get. Okay, here we go. All right, so the first thing I find myself doing is figuring out how to use this piece of wolf paper and I decided that my course of action would be to turn it into a fishtail banner. And I put the fishtail at the top and then I decided I wanted it to look like the paper was much larger. So I just cut it in half and did a little sneaky behind kind of thing. And then that small polka dot pattern paper, I go ahead and do the same thing. I go ahead and put it into a fishtail banner with the fishtail at the top do a little slice in it and go ahead and then I'll have two banners above this really great striped paper. And I also decide that I think I need to go ahead and ink my edges because this paper is all the same collection, but I do want it to be uniform while having a slight differentiation between the layers of the papers. So I'm starting to put my little fishtail banners down. I decided to put the polka dot paper on top of the wolf paper as I feel like it shows up just a little bit better. And I also subset them so that they're not at the same, I guess, height, height, I guess. So I went ahead and did that. I wanna make sure that my, the uh, base part of my layout is pretty squared off. I do have, couple of square shapes I have a couple of linear shapes but for the most part this is looking pretty darn blocky I'm gonna go ahead and back this photo that I have in kind of a pink base uh, I'm gonna go ahead and back that on a white background I found myself finally realizing that I should be using uh, both sides of these single-sided papers which lets me use up a little bit of my stash as well as lets me uh, have a nice white border around around some of my layouts for the longest time I was running over and reaching for white cardstock when I don't know if that's ter terribly necessary when I have goodies in my kits right here I had to faff about with my lamp for a little bit because somehow I turned it off I'm scrapbooking um, a little bit this last uh, couple months in the summer upstairs, so I'm not in my usual setup. So I'm just on this Tim Holtz glass mat with a regular at light, but I am ever so much enjoying being upstairs in my house. I have, um, one of my daughters will be moving into her dorm shortly, and I think I'm going to be taking the desk in her room for a while for layouts because she's right in front of a really good window. I figure it's going to be really good for light, but that will be in a week if I see if that setup works for me. I seem to kind of um, be a nomadic scrapbooker. You saw that I put up the photo just now on some fun foam and I have that foam that I'm using is adhesive backed on one side, so it is really easy to just peel it off and stick it on pretty quickly. So I'm going ahead and grabbing three wood veneer pieces from the get-go to use on this layout. I tried to use them in my third layout and it really just didn't work out. So I wanted to make sure to get some on this layout. And I'm going ahead and looking through this Project Life Ephemera pack to see what pieces I might be able to use. 
there are some uh, gold pieces and almost charcoal black pieces that go really well with this kit that I thought I could use. Now the fun thing that I've uh, really noticed with this uh, with this collection is I've used these, uh, the last three layouts I've done with the collection have been kind of woodsy up north kind of layouts and this one I'm going ahead with the same group of guys and using it on a wedding layout and I think it still works. These are kind of rugged fellows and all of that kind of thing so I really am so happy with the way this this collection is lending itself to more than just kind of outdoor life kind of things. So I'm going ahead and putting this little epic word in. So I guess it's kind of saying epic love. And then I realized I really have got to attach my photo and whatnot because I'm starting to put down things in the background without even having that squared up. And yes, my ever so present T-square ruler it hangs out with me a lot on my channel. And it does make an appearance, I think, in 99% of my scrapbooking layouts. Unless I'm doing it on line paper or a grid or something like that, it does end up getting used. So I have a couple of metallic gold uh, oversized photo corners that I am going to go ahead and use that were part of that die cut set that I was using by Project Life. And it feels like it, um, I guess, fancies up the layout just a little tiny bit, adding a little bit of a metallic feel putting that word down a little bit more. It didn't seem like it was lined up quite right. Where I'm scrapbooking, the, I'm at my new uh, kitchen table and the table's a little bit higher. I, I, it feels like two inches higher than my old table and I am not a tall person at all. So it takes me an extra second to be able to peek up and over to see if things are tucked in enough and all that kind of stuff. So this die cut collection as well had these uh, metallic arrows and stars. So I went ahead and used all the pieces I could. Otherwise, it had some really nice saturated colors, some deep browns, um, kind of jade greens, that kind of stuff. But I wasn't uh, wanting to include those colors in this layout that much. So you see right there the um, colors of the collection that some work, some don't, but hey, I will get them on there if I can. I'm seeing where I can get this arrow, where it might uh, enhance my page as well. I do have to consider a title. It's it's getting about that time. So I have the uh, base of my layout done. So now it's like, all right, let's come up with a title. Let's see what large embellishments I still want to include. Now I'm using... Uh, this really great set of foam thickers and they're in an elephant gray color and I think I picked them up at Tuesday morning either got them there or I got them in an embellishment pack from Secret Not Secret Kit Club along the way and I'm going to use the word bros for uh, the alphas I'm going to use from this collection they're they're larger thickers and there's not a whole lot of um of alphas and all that stuff in here. So I've been using them sparingly, but I really love the effect that they give me and they go great with this collection. I'm gonna sneak that star under the word bros right there and also go ahead and get this wood veneer uh, camera on there. It's like an Instax camera, it's pretty cool. And I had to flip it around a few times. I was trying to remember how my daughter's Instax camera looks. So it, it took me a minute of flipping and flopping it but it does end up working out. I wanted to add a little bit more to my title and I saw this little Heidi Swap st uh, cardstock sticker, kind of cardstock, like not heavy cardstock, that says Fearless. So I ended up with Fearless Bros on there. And then next I knew I wanted to do just a little bit of journaling and these, this uh, Heidi Swap sticker, they're uh, six by 12 or 12 by 12, depending on how you think has these really great journaling spots. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that up on my fishtail banner area. And so that I can just get a little bit of words in there. I tend to handwrite my journaling because I guess I would just want to get it done. I love the look of typewriter journaling. 
But if I can get my journaling done right when I'm doing a layout, it's all the better because I will never go back and finish later. I just like to roll with it all at the same time. So I'm just explaining who got married and that kind of thing. I mean, most of these fellows are uh, a fairly present part of our lives, so we see them a lot. Going ahead and remembering to get my inking in where I can and on a couple of different spots and also adding just a little bit of liquid adhesive wherever I can with the Heidi Swap stuff. They don't stick that well, so they just need a little tiny bit of help. Disclaimer real quick that I have two bulldogs in the room with me and one is snoring away having himself a time So if you hear that in the background, that is Mason. It just cannot be helped um, What else to tell you? Oh Let me do the business side if you could go ahead and like and subscribe I would be very grateful and if you do want to be notified of when my next video comes up go ahead and click the bell now, if you go ahead and take a look, there are a bunch of really talented scrapbookers who are part of the How to Kill a Kit with Style family, and we all do different kits, so clearly our layouts will look different, as well as our designs are totally different, I and mean, we might be doing them for challenges or, or different fun events that are going on in our lives. So it is really fun to see who's doing what. That is fun, and I think that's about all that I have for that. I did want to say that I'm really excited about the kit that I'm putting together for August. It is going to be based on whatever is going to be going on at the um, Counterfeit Kit Club. So I'm looking forward to putting together my kit and doing something fun with that shortly. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm anticipating it being bright summer colors, which will be fun after using the, this more muted palette that I've been using lately. So that's exciting stuff. But what I'm doing here is just kind of finishing up the, uh, the end here, the decorating phase. I am using right there. Those are citrus, uh, citrus twist kits. It's a set of tiny word stickers and I'm sure they're not called tiny word stickers but they're exclusive to the club it's a really nice muted uh, charcoal with very gold writing on them so the gold will show up ever so nicely so I did go ahead to see if I could get these project life epoxy circles on there I've really been enjoying using them this month they are a muted gold and a muted silver so they have an impact on your page while not distracting from what you're doing for your layouts. So I've got them on a couple of layouts, I believe. These are the Heidi Swap Puffy Stickers, and they're absolutely the bee's knees. They're, I mean, they're just gorgeous, and they're squishy as I'll get out. They're that really soft kind of like 1980s puffies. So those are fab. So I'm going to sprinkle those around in a few different places on the layout just so I can have some difference in texture and dimension and all that kind of stuff. The bin on the left is filled with tons and tons of enamel dots and I'm using a set by Bow Bunny. They're actually like gems but there's black and um, like a smoky clear charcoal color so they are I, I've been so surprised how much I've used though them on my layouts because Bow Bunny tends to lend itself to things that are rather pretty and kind of delicate, maybe a little frilly. So it's it's kind of fun mixing a Bow Bunny product along with um, this Heidi Swap more rugged collection. Now you saw me reaching across there. I was getting some Heidi Swap color shine in gold. And I'm shaking it up ever so liberally because I want to do giant splats. So you see my hand way up high, letting gravity kind of gather up the product and I guess give me a bigger splat. Now, if I want them to be smaller and more subtle, I'll go ahead and just sprinkle them closer to the layout. If I want them big and round and dramatic, I will go from up high. So that's what you see there, big and small, and uh, they're just giving me just that extra bit, a little something something that I felt that the layout needed. 
So there you go. You see what I've done. And I think that's it for today. So I will see you later, friends. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. And thank you so much for watching. Take care, everybody.